Hello and welcome to Friday. We've reached February 19th, 2021, and you've reached Cord Cutting Weekly, where we wrap up the past week in cord cutting and streaming news. And this week we may have had a short week according to the calendar, but we still had plenty to talk about. We've got new YouTube TV add-ons incoming, rumors of a new Roku remote control option, more Pluto TV channels, and more. But first, yes, you guessed it, if you haven't done so already, please do consider clicking those like and subscribe buttons down below. They really do help us out tremendously, and you'd also be joining a great community. Okay, with that regular plea out of the way, let's talk about the news, starting with Roku. With its fourth quarter earnings now released, Roku was confirming it has surpassed 50 million active accounts by the end of 2020. The company had shared some preliminary numbers suggesting around 51.2 million active accounts by December 31st, 2020, and this week's Q4 earnings announcement confirms that figure. In all, revenue was up 58% year over year, totaling just under $650 million. The company also says it's the top smart TV operating system in the U.S., with around 38% of all smart TVs in the country being Roku models. Meanwhile, according to Roku CEO Anthony Wood, the Roku channel is growing twice as fast as its streaming platform overall. In other words, it looks like 2020 was a busy, busy year for Roku. In Amazon news, we're seeing reports that the new Fire TV user interface will be coming to more devices soon. We first reported on the new user experience back in December of last year and followed that up with a recent video tour. But at the time of the announcement, the update was only slated to arrive on the third gen Fire TV Stick and the Fire TV Stick Lite. Other devices in the Fire TV lineup would have to wait until later in 2021. Well, Protocol reported this week that it believes the next round of Fire TV updates could include the Fire TV Stick 4K, the Fire TV Cube, and the third gen Fire TV Pendant. That's what Amazon is calling their HDMI dongle form factor. In any case, there's still no official word on when these other devices will receive the update, but we'll keep a close eye on Amazon for any official announcements. Over on Pluto TV, we've got a few more channel options to choose from this week. Headlining the new additions is a new Smithsonian Channel Selects, which, as you might have guessed, will feature an assortment of historical content from Smithsonian Channel shows like Civil War 360 and Stories from the Vaults. Beyond that, you get a few new music options as well, all focusing on specific eras of music. So you should see Vivo 80s, Vivo 90s, and Vivo 2K populating your lineup as of this week. So if you're craving a certain decade of music, you now have some more options. Moving on, the Apple TV app is now available on the Chromecast with Google TV. Now, this follows Google's announcement back in December that the app would be coming to the streaming device sometime in 2021. So now, Chromecast users have access to, among other things, Apple's own streaming service, Apple TV+. And yes, you can use Google Assistant to access Apple content via your voice if you want to. The app is also set to arrive on other Google TV devices, including new TV sets from Sony and TCL. And still more devices will see the Apple TV app in the coming months, we're told, and we'll update you when we hear of those specific dates. And in case you missed it, last weekend, Warner Brothers sent out something of a Valentine's Day gift to DC Comics fans in the form of a new trailer for Zack Snyder's Justice League. Now, that's the new edit of the Justice League film from original director Zack Snyder. It's slated to premiere on HBO Max on March 18th with a reported runtime of around four hours. So, yes, there's plenty of new footage coming in this new version, and you can see some of that new footage in these recent trailers. And if you haven't checked it out by now, you can view the latest trailer over on HBO Max's YouTube channel. And you won't have too much longer to wait as Zack Snyder's Justice League, as it's officially called, arrives on HBO Max on March 18th. In Roku news, Reddit users appear to have uncovered a new remote control that could be making its way to future Roku devices. The new Roku Voice Remote Pro looks to offer many of the same features of the existing Voice Remote model, but also swaps out the standard batteries for an internal rechargeable one. The likely goal there is to reduce the potential for waste for those using one-time-use alkaline batteries in their remotes. In any case, the screenshot shared on Reddit suggests this remote is currently being offered in a test phase through Roku's early access program for $29.99. We reached out to Roku for a comment on the rumored device and the company replied, We're always working on bringing new products and features to Roku users and part of that process is publicly testing new ideas with a small set of our customers. In any case, we'll be on the lookout for an official release in the future. And in other Roku news, we're also seeing reports that the company could be venturing into original content. That notion comes from recent job listings spotted by Protocol that call for a lead production attorney that would be involved in development and production of content. 
And while we haven't heard anything official about Roku's plans in this area, it's not hard to imagine the company expanding into original content. It already has its own free streaming platform in the Roku channel, and it recently picked up a collection of exclusive content after Quibi shut down. And if it does indeed start producing its own content, it's also not a huge leap to picture the Roku channel as a logical home for those shows, movies, and or specials. Of course, we'll keep a close eye on any announcements from Roku, but in the meantime, what do you think of Roku's chances when it comes to producing content in-house? Is it a smart move? A risky gamble? Maybe both. Feel free to let us know in the comment section down below. We've also got a couple YouTube TV updates to talk about. First off, in a blog post, YouTube announced it's bringing an add-on package to its live TV streaming service that includes a host of new features, including 4K streaming, offline viewing, and no limit on the number of simultaneous streams in your home. Now, at the time we're recording this video, there's been no official details on exactly when that add-on package will arrive or how much it'll cost, but we'll definitely keep you posted as we learn more. Meanwhile, YouTube TV is also offering other add-on options, including a new bundle that includes premium channels. The new Entertainment Plus bundle includes HBO Max, Showtime, and Stars for an additional price of $29.99 per month. Now that's on top of your regular YouTube TV rate, and the company says it represents about a $5 monthly savings compared to buying all three premium channels individually. The new Entertainment Plus bundle joins extras like the Sports Plus add-on that was announced last September. Now that one includes NFL Red Zone, Fox College Sports, and other athletics-focused options for $10.99 per month. And these newer add-ons are available to both new and existing customers. Current users could tack on those add-ons via the Memberships menu, and you can find out more details in our post link down below in the video description. And we're not quite done talking about YouTube just yet. The company also announced this week that it will launch a beta version of its Shorts feature in the U.S. sometime next month. Now, if you're not familiar, YouTube Shorts are essentially the company's answer to TikTok, offering users the chance to post short-form videos directly from their mobile devices. The feature began testing in India last year and has reportedly seen strong growth since then. Beyond that, YouTube also announced it'll be adding Super Chat and Super Stickers options for live streams and an applause feature that'll let viewers express their support for their favorite channels and creators. As for our own channel, will we be implementing any of these new features on Core Cutters News? Honestly, it's too soon to tell, but we'll certainly take a look at them at least to see if any of the features can add to the experience. In any case, all you YouTube creators out there will soon have some new options to choose from. And that wraps up a rather busy week in core cutting and streaming news. As always, thanks for tuning in this week, and if this just so happens to be the first time you've tuned in, we'd love it if you considered clicking those like and subscribe buttons down below. You'd be joining a pretty active YouTube channel and a pretty active community as well. On Wednesday, we have a live Q&A stream with our very own Jess, and then on Thursdays, we dive deep into specific topics like this week's countdown of your favorite new streaming devices. And if you haven't checked that one out, I'd recommend it, especially if you've got your eye on some new streaming gear at the moment. And of course, there's Cord Cutting Weekly on Fridays, where we wrap up all the biggest streaming headlines from the past week. And don't forget, we also have a news website on top of all that, cordcuttersnews.com, where you can stay up to date 24-7. For now, my name is Philip Palermo. Have a safe and wonderful weekend. We'll see you next time. Take care.